Right before we jump into this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're here on YouTube or if you're on Facebook, give this a Sherry McSherison. So now let's get to the video. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com here at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair to test out the ye old Canon 6D Mark II in a real world situation. So let's go spread some mirth and merriment and get on in to the fair. Now there's so much that you can photograph at a Renaissance Fair and what I chose to start off doing was shooting glass blowing. Now how did I get access to move into the area where they were blowing glass? Well, I simply asked because if I didn't ask if I could shoot in that area, the photos wouldn't have been as good as if I did ask and guess what? They said, sure, come on in and shoot, just don't get hit by flying hot molten glass. So what I was going for when photographing the glass blowing were tight shots, wider shots, medium shots as always, and I bumped the ISO a little bit because I had to compensate for the lack of light that was in there when I was shooting the glass blowing. So I think I got some pretty good shots, including the ones with the 11 to 24 that are ultra wide. as well as some tight detail shots of the colored glass with the furnaces in the background because you can't forget to get the detailed photos as well. So that was a good start to the day. Should we throw this lens back in and see if we can make it a telephoto instead? <laughs> So how does this camera feel in the hands? It felt almost like any other Canon camera. It felt perfectly fine to shoot with throughout the entire day. Now this camera is dust proof and weather resistant, but if you want more weather resistance, you would want to look at something like the 5D Mark IV. This one is also lighter than the original 6D and it's packing GPS, NFC, as well as Wi-Fi. This camera is a 26.2 megapixel full frame sensor and the original 6D only had 20 megapixels. This is also the first full frame Canon camera to offer the Digic 7 processor inside it. And the question is, is 26.2 megapixels enough or is it not enough? The ISO in this camera goes from 100 to 40,000 natively and it can be expanded up to 102,400. Now this is about a half a stop better than the original 6D, but keep in mind because this has a Digic 7 processor and it's a newer sensor, you're probably going to get better high ISO capability out of this camera than the older camera. The Renaissance Fair is a perfect opportunity to get a bunch of photos of people dressed up. So I wanted to go around and see if I could get some headshots of a couple people throughout the park. So the easiest thing to do was walk up to them and say, can I take your portrait? So that's what I did and there were some good ones that came out of it. Guess what I got to do? I got to ride the wild hog. Now the only reason I wanted to ride the wild hog is because I wanted to take a portrait of the guy who was throwing the hog and spinning it around. And I just ate. Now we didn't get to do a headshot, but we did get to do one of those ultra wide angle portraits, which I think looks pretty good. And when you get to see those raw files, you can see how the dynamic range was because I shot it at 100 ISO. So there's been a lot of talk that the Canon 6D Mark II isn't as good at 100 ISO as the Canon Crop Sensor 80D. But what I wanna point out to you is that the camera that we're shooting on right now to do this video is a Nikon D5. That has nine stops of dynamic range at 100 ISO. This Canon 6D Mark II also has nine stops of dynamic range at 100 ISO. This is a $6,500 camera. 
that is a $2,000 camera. The point is that at the base 100 ISO, it may not be the best dynamic range, but it's not bad at all. Keep in mind, as the ISO goes up in the 6D Mark II, the dynamic range is on par with the other full frame sensors that Canon is making. I think a lot of people are blowing this way out of proportion without ever using this camera, and I'm gonna supply you with the raw file so you can see for yourself if you like it or you don't. With this camera, you will get six and a half frames a second continuous shooting, which is up from four and a half frames a second in the 6D, the original one. Now keep in mind that the 5D Mark IV shoots at seven frames a second. So just a half a frame difference isn't that big of a deal between the 6D Mark II and the 5D Mark IV. But the question is, can you use this camera to shoot sports? I still think you can use it to shoot just about anything because it's not about how many frames a second you can shoot, it's about how good is your anticipation to capture the proper moment. Did you know that I have four educational video guides? I have the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto, the Fronos Photo Flash Guide, Fronos Photo Guide to DSLR Video, and the Fronos Photo Guide to Video Editing. To check out free previews of all four of those, go to fronosphoto.com slash guides. So there was a lot of merriment going around, AKA dancing. There were also a bunch of kids that decided to run around the chessboard and I thought that was a good opportunity to try some action shots and get these kids running around having fun. And so that's exactly what I did. Four years later, you're still working with a three inch screen, which has the same exact resolution as the original 6D. Now the differences are, it's now a touch screen, which I love touch screens on these cameras for zooming in or changing the menu system. But this is the first full frame Canon camera to offer you a very angle screen, which is gonna come in handy if you need to shoot those images low to the ground or high above your head. Or if you're shooting video, it's nice to be able to do a vloggity style thing where you can rotate it back, look at it, and see what you're looking at because it's right in front of you. So how many card slots does this camera have? It only has one SD card slot that is UHS-1, which is a slower card slot. I'm a big fan of cameras that offer two card slots because you can shoot redundant. In case anything ever goes wrong with one card, you should have it saved on the second card as well. And another thing that is missing inside this camera is a headphone jack. Now you have a microphone jack for recording audio, but no way to listen to it back. Or when you're shooting video, you're not able to monitor your audio to make sure it's spot on. finest of silk. So next up, I went over to shoot the birds. There were falcons, there were owls, there were falcons, and there were falcons. There were quite a bit of those birds flying around. Now this was a good opportunity to test out the six and a half frames a second as well as the focus tracking. So what I wanted to do was capture the owl sitting on the perch and then flying or jumping to the hand of the trainer. The focus did a tremendous job tracking the subject, the owl in this case, all the way. And the six and a half frames a second gave me a nice burst rate to capture some cool images. This also gave me a great opportunity to get some portraits of the Falcon trainers. I got some verticals, I got some horizontals, and I think it did a very good job allowing me to nail focus right on the eye, as well as track them as they were moving and get some pretty cool shots. Now I highly recommend if you do a lot of vertical shooting that you get the vertical grip so you can shoot vertically much easier. I find it hard to turn the camera like this, change all my settings, and I feel like I'm missing my focusing points because I don't have the stability of having a vertical grip on. One of the things I noticed today while shooting is that the viewfinder seems small and it also only has 98% coverage. Now is that 2% really a big deal? Not really, but it kind of makes no sense while you have a full frame camera without 100% viewfinder coverage. Mm -hmm. 
One of the things I was looking most forward to was shooting the joust. I just had to make sure I didn't get run over by a horse. And I didn't. Yay. One of the limitations that you will find in this camera is that it maxes out at 1 4,000th of a second for shutter speed. That's the same as what the Canon 6D used to do, but keep in mind that the 5D Mark IV can max out at 1 8,000th of a second. It's really not that big of a deal. It's not a deal breaker in my mind. You just need to pay attention to where your shutter speed is in comparison to your ISO and aperture. Now I want to let you know that I remapped one of the buttons, the AF on button, I changed to allow me to go from one shot to AF servo in a press of a button. Now unlike the 5D Mark IV where you can press the button and it will change to one shot and stay there, I had to go ahead and hold the button in if I wanted to go from one shot to servo and have it do continuous focus. So why did they take this out? Probably because they don't want to give you the same features as the 5D Mark IV. Is it a deal breaker? No, because it still comes in handy, I just wish it did what the Mark IV did. Because we shot portraits, we know that this camera can shoot portraits, but can it do higher speed action type of things? And I say, absolutely. It's not really about all of the specs and features that a camera has, it's about what you do with it. But how did it work out during the joust? I think it did a pretty good job with following and tracking the subjects in continuous autofocus. I think the six and a half frames a second is good enough for what you need when you're shooting action. But remember, anticipate the motion, capture the image, and don't just sit there and spray and pray. Also, I had a good opportunity to shoot some of the sword fighting, and I think the camera handled very well in that situation. Something interesting happened when I was trying to change the ISO when I had my eye up to the camera. I would press the ISO button on the top right, and I noticed that I went from 100 ISO to 1000 ISO and couldn't figure out why my photo was so overexposed and I realized that my nose was touching the touchscreen, which changed the ISO from 100 to 1000. Either the touchscreen is super sensitive, or I just have a big nose. I, I, have a, I don't have that big of a nose. It's actually not that big, see? It runs in the family, what can I say? One of the big upgrades from the original 6D to the 6D Mark II is that it now has 45 autofocusing points with all of them being cross-type. Now the original 6D had 11 focusing points with only one being a cross-type sensor, which was really bad. Now keep in mind, it seems like they took the 80D focusing system and repurposed it for the 6D Mark II, and the one thing that they failed to do is spread the focusing points out closer to the edges of the frame. One of the hardest things that I ran into for this photo shoot is the fact that the focusing points are all clumped up near the middle, which made it harder to get the focus points where I wanted, meaning I had to lock in, recompose, and then miss the photo that I wanted to take. So that's something you need to get used to in this camera. Also, mirrorless cameras these days have focusing points that go almost all the way out and around the frame. That's something that you need to keep in mind when you are looking for a camera for you. Do you need those focusing points all the way out to the edges of the frame, or could you survive with these ones that are clumped up in the middle? I know that it's a toss-up for me. There's certain things I like in the mirrorless, and there's certain things that I like in the DSLR, but if I had to choose, do I want focusing points spread out to the edge or just stuck in the middle, I want them spread out all the way, so that's one of the detractors from this camera.
If you're watching this, you probably have camera gear, so have you checked out my app called My Gear Vault? It's the best way to input, organize, and protect your gear so you know what you have and what it's worth. You can download it right now at MyGearVault.com for iOS and Android, and it's free. Here's an example where the focusing points don't spread out far enough. When I was trying to shoot the guy on the horse in a portrait mode, it's kind of like his head is almost close to the center, just above the center of the frame, whereas if I had focusing points that spread out further, it would be better composition. So I've noticed that with this camera, it's messing with my composition because the focus points don't go where I want them to go. Now another thing this camera is missing is a joystick for moving the focusing points. Yes, you have a button to move it up and down and left and right with your thumb, but it's just not in the right place to get you to quickly move your focusing points to where they should be. So after the jousting match was over, it gave me a good opportunity to get to front and center of where everything was taking place to get some ultra wide angle shots at 11 as well as 24 millimeters. Now let's take a look at the video features and the biggest elephant in the room is the fact that this camera doesn't shoot 4K which makes absolutely no sense for a camera that is brand new in this day and age. Now it maxes out at 1080 at 60 frames a second and it does not shoot all eye. Now the original 60 shot all eye. What this means is you're getting less of a data rate whereas the older camera gave you a higher data rate to shoot with all eye. Now one of the functions that I absolutely love in this camera is the dual pixel AF because if you're shooting video and you want to have it do autofocus this will track it and do a fantastic job doing it but the big disappointment here is that this camera does not have 4k and the fact that this may be out for another three years before it's ever replaced means that other camera manufacturers who are already including 4k in cameras that are priced the same if not similar are gonna pass them by so that is kind of a failure on Canon's part, especially knowing that this camera does 4K time-lapse videos, which means it probably has the capability to shoot 4K, they just haven't unlocked it. Another cool feature you'll find for shooting video is the 5-axis digital IS, or image stabilization. Now keep in mind, because it's digital, you're gonna crop down on your video just a little bit, but it does work very well, especially when I was shooting vlogs with this camera. But what was also cool is that some of the subjects that were participating in this basically moved close to where I was to allow me to get some portraits, which were great. And then a few minutes later, they went out into the crowd, which allowed me to set up some portraits with them to test out the camera to see how well it did. Now I did get to enjoy shooting the bow and arrow. I had 10 arrows, guess how many bullseyes I got? Zero. Crushed it. So I had a great day shooting here at the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair. There was so much to try and capture, and I think the camera did exactly what it was supposed to do. It's a camera. I shot it. There weren't too many things that held me back, and the features that I did use I think worked pretty well. But the only way to determine how well this camera did, and if I recommend it for you, is to take the images back to the studio and see how they turned out. So let's go do that. So here we are back in the loft and I want to remind you that you can download the full res exported JPEGs as well as sample RAW files over at the link on the screen. Now the point of giving those files to you is so that you can determine whether they're good enough for you based off of us going into the real world to use them. Now before I get to showing you the images that I think are the best from the shoot, let's talk about the elephant in the room. There's been a lot of complaining, some warranted, some not warranted, about this 6D Mark II. We know that Canon used older technology for a lot of features in this camera, but they also introduced some new technology especially on the video side like the dual pixel AF, still while leaving out the 4K, which totally makes no sense. 
But I do understand why Canon would do something like this. They don't want to alienate their 5D Mark IV buyers. They don't want to kill the sales of that camera by releasing something that's less priced but has the same features. That makes sense. So what did we do? We went out into the real world. We're going to supply you with real world examples and I will tell you what I think about the camera right now. So let's take a look at the sample images. Now, I went to 2500 ISO to give me a faster shutter speed to freeze whatever action it was that I needed to freeze when these guys were moving or doing whatever they needed to do. So I just I just like this shot from where I was. But this shot is one of the better shots that I captured. I love the fact that you can see that it's molten hot glass and he's using some wet newspaper to mold it and shape it to what he wants it to be. This is at 2500 ISO as well with the 70 to 200 2.8 IS, the original IS. They have a newer one out. And I love what I was able to capture here. It's sharp. Um, you, you, you've got this smoke, you, the this, this steam rising, you can see all the different charred stuff in his hand and the water dripping. I just like this shot. Now moving on to this, just another cool shot where they were putting molten glass around the stem of the glass here. And as we go forward, you're going to see what happened. Now you can see that that was created, this purple look right here as it cooled down. Now let me just talk about this shot for a second. We're still at 2500 ISO, but I missed. I missed bad on my exposure. This is where it started out. Super dark, right? Because it's not gathering as much light from around because I am zoomed into uh, looks like 200 millimeters on this. So I was off by over a stop and a third. So you tell me whether you like this shot or not. Is it too noisy? Is it too grainy? I don't think so again. Now when you zoom in like this, you're going to see noise, but I think it held up perfectly fine, at least for my taste, for being off like this, the color still looks good. Moving on to the next one, this is one of those ones that I took at 100 ISO so that you guys who think that there's a dynamic range issue with this camera can take a picture that shot at 100 ISO and see for yourself whether you like it. Now I know a lot of talk has been there in the photo community about what it looks like at 100 ISO in terms of dynamic range compared to some of the older cameras. I don't even want to get into defending that or trying to say that that is wrong because I'm sure it's right in terms of the technical aspect where you're out in the studio testing this stuff. But I went into the real world, I gave you sample images so you can determine whether it works for you or not. I think that's the least that we can do and I think that's the best thing to do is give you sample images in the real world to say whether or not it's good or not. So let's keep going. I like the shot. I like the colors. I like the tones. I shot this from inside that bodega with the background out here being in the, in the light. It was an overcast day, but I'm not saying it's a great shot. I'm just showing you an example with lots of colors at 100 ISO for you to check out for yourself. Moving on to the Jester guy who was on stilts, not that I showed that. The reason I'm showing this is because I was using their Zone AF and I wanted to shoot and get the guy's face in focus. Well, look what happened. It focused really well on his shoulder, which isn't good. That means I missed the focus and that shot isn't good to use. I tried out the Zone AF because when I shoot my Nikons, I use the Dynamic Area AF, 9 point, 25 point, and that usually hits very well. This Zone AF acts like 3D focusing, meaning the focus points are constantly bouncing around all over the place within a small zone area and you're not sure what it's going to hit. And it missed a lot. I found myself shooting during the shoot going, why am I missing? Why is my focus not right? Why isn't it tack sharp? And I'm generally tack sharp. And it was the zone AF that I think doesn't do a great job. But when I moved over to single point AF, that worked extremely well. It nailed where I wanted it to be. It tracked subjects very well when I was in continuous. And I was very happy with that. But I learned that that zone AF system is just not a good one, so I wouldn't use it. So let's move on to the next one. See, I switched over to that. I nailed it right here on the eye and the face, and it was much better. That's what it's all about. This is the, the this is a hawk, because we were talking to a hawkery guy, or he was just showing all the things about hawks. Just showing you nice and sharp here on the eye. Of course, the lens has a lot to do with that. This is at 800 ISO. Uh, I'm happy with the, with the shot. I'm going to show you something right now that I don't like about the camera at all is the focus points. It's like they took 
the ADD focusing system, which they may have done, which is older, and put it inside of a full frame camera. Because the focus points don't spread out far enough, it hurts my composition, which is a prime example right here, because I have to focus in on the eye if I'm in continuous focus, and I'm leaving all of this headroom. And yes, you could crop that after the fact, but now you're just taking away quality if that's what you needed to do. The way that you would get around this is to be in single focus so that you lock in on the eye, then you recompose, but that is slow as molasses. So the fact that they use a smaller focusing system or an older focusing system in this full frame body is not very good. Uh, is it a complete deal breaker? No. Does it suck? Yes, I'm not happy about it, but if this is the camera that you're using, then you learn to deal with it. So moving on, there was this owl that went from a perch and then flew over to its handler, and I just like this shot. Let's show you the focus. We're tack sharp right there on the face of the owl. Whoo! I wonder how many licks it takes to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop. Three. Okay, so I like the shot. Not much else to say about that. Moving on, this shot happened. I was in continuous focus. I just like the, the, the composition. I like the way the portrait looks. Uh, again, the focus is right in the middle. There's a lot of headroom again because of where the focus points are, but I still liked this image. What was I at? 1600 ISO this time, and you can check out the, uh, the raw file for yourself. Moving on again, this is where I wanted to give you another 100 ISO shot. I'll show you where it started, right here. It, I exposed more for the sky. I intentionally did this for a sample for you guys to look at. I intentionally got the exposure wrong, but right for the, more right for the sky than for the subject so that you can take the file and see how you can bring it back. And this is how I brought it back, and I'm happy with what I was able to do with it. So you guys can go download that file and try it for yourself as well. Moving on, just showing you another nice portrait. You can get great shots with whatever camera it is that you have in your hands if you know what you're doing. That still does not make up for the fact that they used four-year-old technology for a lot of the systems in this camera, but it's you that is the photographer who uses the tools that are in your hands to get good pictures. Remember that. Do you want to show the world that you shoot raw and get something similar to what I'm wearing? Well, head on over to store.fronosphoto.com where you can pick up all of your I Shoot Raw swag, including this shirt, many other shirts, and the I Shoot Raw Think Tank Retrospective 30. So head on over to store.fronosphoto.com right now. So moving on from this portrait, ah, we moved on to the joust, one of the most fun things that I've shot or seen. It was awesome doing the joust. This is the king, just like the composition, focused in on him over there. You have the nice out of focusy stuff right here, which is color. Cool shot. I like that. Moving on. Again, you can see where the focusing point, you know, it, it works much better in this image that I don't need to frame her all the way to the top because we have all of this other stuff in the frame from all of the, I think they're called jousting sticks up here. Correct me if I'm wrong, because you will in the comments, but you also have the house and the thing in the background. So it doesn't make the fact that the focusing points don't reach all the way out to the edge in this one that big of a deal. So moving on again, just a cool shot of the, of the guy parading around getting ready to do the joust. I like this one, nice color, nice tones. Uh, it's a nice file. Then we move on to the joust itself, which I did go back to the zone AF. Now, the reason I went back to the zone AF is because I wasn't back at the loft to take a look at the images to really figure out what was wrong and what was causing the issue. So I was doing some test shots with the zone AF to see if that was really what it was. And I went to zone AF here thinking that that would be the best option for me because again, I know in the Nikons with the dynamic AF, it's best for using when you're shooting action. And so that's why I thought I would use it here and it didn't exactly miss it just hit the stick here and not the person because again those focusing points are moving around and deciding for you where they should be instead of you selecting where you want it to be and that's what I did here I wanted it to hit the face of the jouster but I missed it but I still think the shot works overall boom moving to this yeah you may be wondering why was I vertical well, because I wanted to try to get a vertical one, and yeah, a horizontal shot would have been better for this, but I got the, the stick breaking on his, on his shield, and then the next image works well vertical, but wouldn't have worked as well horizontal because I would have lost the, the stick flying. So he got hit, he threw everything, you know, to make it seem like he got hit because it's actually all made up. It's like wrestling. It's not, it's not real. Nobody died. Um, and, and so 
I got lucky there. I was vertical for a reason and, I, and it ended up working out in my favor for this image. So moving on, now they're fighting on the ground. A good opportunity to get some shots. Um, got him in here. He's blocking with his shield thingy. Um, nice and look, it doesn't get any sharper than that. That is as sharp as sharp can be. I'm at one four thousandth of a second, by the way, which brings up one of the complaints that a lot of people have is, oh my God, it only shoots at one four thousandth. Well, most of the consumer end cameras out in the world only go up to one four thousandth of a second. And this is an entry level full frame camera. Is one eight thousandth of a second really needed in most cameras? No, it's in the higher end cameras because sometimes you go that high, but it's not a deal breaker at all. What is my ISO at? I'm at 400 ISO at 1 4,000th of a second, which means I didn't max out my exposure. I could have dropped it to 320, to 200, to 100 ISO, and I still had plenty of room. So all the complaining about 1 4,000th of a second is just complaining. That's not a big deal. And in fact, the 6D original had 1 4,000th of a second as well. So let's keep going through with these images. Yep, he's going to win. He's asking the crowd what he should do. One of the tough things about this is the focusing point. Again, you may have to switch over to single focus. So moving on again, boom, went to a different angle of the joust. I like this shot. This is good. I think it nailed him right in the face because uh, not, not the stick didn't nail him in the face. I nailed the focus right in the face. I actually went back to single focus, single point again, and it was much better for what I wanted it to be. Um, he got knocked off his horse. You can see those photos over on the site as he fell off. You got this guy, he's all excited. He's like, roar, and he's out of focus. I mean, that's what happens. He's out of focus. Why is he out of focus? Because look where he is in the frame. Right? My shutter speed's at 1 3200th of a second. That's not the problem. The problem is that it's, it, it, I'm like focused right down here because that's where the focusing points are. So I would have to quickly change or lock focus, but I want to be in continuous focus. This is the problem with a smaller focusing system. This is why you don't use a crop sensor focusing system in a full frame body. It's just something that you have to learn to deal with. It's, it's not good that it's there, but you have to remember that this is an entry level full frame camera. Just like when Nikon has the entry level D610, the focusing points on that thing are stuck in the middle as well. I'm not trying to defend either of them. I'm just trying to get you to understand that if you want the best features, you're gonna have to pay for them because this is a business that these guys need to run. They're gonna make you buy the 5D Mark IV or the Nikon D810 or D850 that's coming out. They're gonna, they're gonna make you spend the money for that. But you're gonna have to deal with this on a consumer end because that is what it is. It's a $2,000 body. It's not a $4,000 body. All right, here we go. So this I finally nailed because he's back into my focusing, my focusing circle. So I hit him, the focus is great, but I noticed the guy in the background. He's running towards him. This Jack Black looking guy is yelling at him. He's like, Err! and then guess what happens? Boom, he hits him and I rapid fired. Six and a half frames a second is what you get. I took four quick shots, boom, 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 and that works out well. Six and a half frames a second is up from the four frames a second in the old camera. Some people always ask, is this a good camera for sports or is this a good camera for action? They only care about how many frames a second that it takes. If my camera gives me one frame a second, I better be able to get the action with that. You're gonna be a much better photographer if you lock your camera into one frame a second or just be being able to get one frame and you get good at that and then you utilize the rapid fire once you know how to capture the moment and anticipate where the action's going to be instead of just spraying and praying. So I think any camera is capable of shooting action sports or action that needs to be captured. Yes, it's nice, six and a half frames a second is a nice upgrade from the older camera. So boom, yeah, nice and broken. Gave you another wide angle shot, this one's at at, uh, ISO 200 f4 using the 11 to 24 like the colors like the tones like everything that I was able to get out of this raw file uh, a portrait of this guy nice to have a portrait went around getting as many as we could this is nice nailed it one uh, 100 ISO f3.2 nice colors nice tones nice out of focus in the background a nice raw file to go and play with. And I think that brings us up to, yeah, this is another one that people wanna see. I shot this one um, intentionally like this. 
so that you can take the file and see if you can bring it back and if that makes you happy or if that doesn't make you happy. You can see that the sky looks like it's completely gone. This is the unedited version. You can see that you can't see much going on inside this shadow area. Then I went ahead, I did this edit to it. Does it look a little punchy? Yeah, it looks a little punchy in the face, but I think it still works. The sky looks good, the colors look good. We can see what's going on inside more so in the shadows. And I give you this file so that you can pixel peep and you can determine if it would be good enough for you. In terms of high ISO capability, this one's at 100 ISO just as a sample image. And then the next one we did, which is in pretty good uh, lighting condition where we do the photo news fix setup, this one's at 40,000. Yes, you're going to see noise. Yes, you're going to see grain, but 40,000 is a nice range to have. Do I wish it went higher? Absolutely. I always wish my ISO went higher, but 40,000 in my opinion, in this image, if I needed to use this, would look perfectly well if it's what you use to capture the moment. And that basically wraps up the sample images that I want to show you. So who is this camera for? If you're somebody who has already invested in Canon glass, then obviously this may be a step up for you. You have to decide, is, is this the camera you want to buy or are you going to save for a 5D Mark IV or are you going to jump ship? If this was the camera that I was using and it's what I had to shoot, I am going to get great results with whatever camera that I'm going to be using and you guys should be able to get to the same point that it's not the camera that makes the photographer, it's the photographer that makes the camera easier even better. And yes, it's still important to have nice features in your camera, which this camera has some nice ones and has some ones that obviously people are not very happy with. But if you already have a 6D Mark I in this case, is this a worthy upgrade? If you need autofocus video, yes, I think you're going to get better results all around with better images. You have 45 cross type points. That's going to serve you better than the old one. But then again, if you're just an amateur shooting around, don't bother upgrading. Just get better glass if that's what you want to do. But where Canon gets hurt in this situation is that they have old technology in a new camera. So if somebody does not have an allegiance or an alliance with any camera system, they may not look at this camera as their first choice because it doesn't have the specs that look poppy when they look at them on the screen. They may want something different, which means they may look to Sony. They may look to Fuji as a different option, though Fuji doesn't make a full frame camera just yet. They just make something a lot larger than that. But in this price range at $2,000, I still think you're going to get fantastic results if you know what you're doing with this camera. But at the end of the day, my job here as a reviewer is to take the camera into the real world to give you the ammunition that you need to make a decision for yourself whether this is the camera for you or not. So go download all the full res JPEGs as well as sample raw files and determine if it's for you and go from there. So that's where I'll leave it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Thank you.